Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Angular Translate with your Ionic Framework project. So what Angular Translate does is it allows you to have international and globalization in your project so that way you can support different languages. And when combined with Ionic Framework and Apache Cordova it, it's pretty useful because you can use the Apache Cordova globalization plugin to decide which language to present to the user. So let's go ahead and start by initializing a new Ionic project. So that project uh, was created on our desktop. The next step we want to do is we want to add the Android platform. Not in the right directory. Now if I was on a Mac I'd also add the iOS platform but since I'm on Ubuntu I'm limited to just Android. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to navigate to the Angular Translate website and download their library. So you can see I've already got this up and I'm going to include this in the write-up. So no worries on trying to find the links. So go ahead and download the latest release. You can find that on our desktop. Go ahead and extract it. And you'll notice that it has a couple of files. So in our Ionic Framework project, navigate to the www folder and then the JS folder. And we're going to go ahead and copy our Angular Translate minified file. And that's all we need from the Angular Translate project. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to traverse back and edit the source code to our index.html file because what we need to do is we need to include the javascript file so inside our index.html right above Cordo right above app.js let's go ahead and include it Alright, go ahead and exit out of your index.html. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up app.js in the use JavaScript folder. We need to go ahead and add Angular Translate as a requirement to the module. So in our module area, go ahead and include Pascal Translate. And again, I'm going to include this in the write-up. Now we've got an almost usable Angular Translate project. The next thing we want to do is we want to add a .config uh, to our module. And in here, you can see that I've added a translate provider, which is part of Angular Translate. And we're going to include two lines. Now what these two lines do, the first line preferred language means that unless uh, when the application starts it's going to choose English as the default language. What the fallback language does is if the language that you're looking for is not available or there are certain elements in your translation table which we'll define later are not available then it will fall back to the English language as well. So let's go ahead and create a very small translation table.
All right, so as you can see, I made two translation tables, one for English and one for Spanish. And they are um, made up by EN and ES. So if I were to change any of the preferred language or fallback language to ES, it would be Spanish instead of English. I'm also going to add one more item. So let's say, for example, I set the preferred language to Spanish. If I tried to access intermediate message, it does not exist in Spanish. So it would fall back to the English version of that um, language variable. So let's go ahead and just change it back to English for now and save. So how do we actually set these? translations in our files. So let's go ahead and open up index.html again. We're going to just add some very simple text. Alright, by adding this it should display the hello message if we load it in a web browser. And it did, it displayed howdy. So if we go back to our app.js file, then we change it to ES and save. Let's refresh, it should say hola, and it does, so that's great. It works exactly as we planned. So let's go ahead and change it to yeah. So now for the big part. We need to actually have the Apache Cordova allow it to pick the language on when the device starts up. So to do this, we need to include the globalization plugin from Apache. And I've gone ahead and I've already bookmarked it. So let's go ahead and add the following line for adding a plugin. All right, so I added it for Android. Now what we can do is we can add translate and inside of our code first we want to see if the globalization plugin is available. We added this because in the web browser, the globalization plugin is not available. The uh, Apache Cordova plugins only work on the device. And we don't want it to throw all kinds of errors because it can't find it. So when it's run on the device, we're, it, it will be found. So we're going to add the following. we get. Alright, so what this is going to do is it's going to look at your device settings and get the language that your device is currently set to. So with that said, we can go ahead and call Now you're probably asking, why did I add all this extra craziness? Well, when you try to view the language, you're going to get something that looks like where it shows the language and then it shows the country. We're trying to keep things simple and we only care about the language. We don't care if it's English, US, English, UK. We just want it to be English or Spanish or any of the above. So now that we've got this, uh, let's go ahead and, and run it on the device and see what happens. 
but for, for debug purposes, let's go ahead and throw an alert to see what our actual language is before we, before we change it on the device. So going back to our command prompt, we're going to build it. Alright, now that it's built, let's go ahead and install it. In this case, I'm going to install it to my simulator. Alright. So as you can see, the device recognized that we're using ENUS. Click OK and displays how you up there. So to further test, let's open up the settings. I think my simulator has settings, yeah. Let's go ahead and find language. We're going to change the language to Spanish. We're going to find our app again, launch it. and it recognized ES and then Spain and for some reason it didn't switch so let, let's figure out why it didn't switch maybe I made a typo somewhere so looking back at our code it turns out that in order for the translate method to work you need to include the promise portion of the use command. So when you add this, you can do the success and, and the fail. And by doing so, when you compile it, let's compile it and, and run it again. Alright, so we just installed it and our device is set for Spanish, Spanish language and you can see that it says hola. So let's go ahead and change the device to English. And we're going to go back into our app. And of course it says howdy again as the English translation. So with that said uh, you can successfully add as many translation tables as you want for as many foreign languages as you want and that's a great way to improve your app store optimization ASO uh, and it'll get you a lot more downloads because there's there's so many more languages than, than just your primary language whether it be English or Chinese there's a lot if you like this video please subscribe to my channel um, also, if, if uh, you want to see a write-up or any of my other articles, I am including the link to my blog. You can go ahead and subscribe there where, you'll, where you will receive email notifications every time I make a new post. Um, stay tuned as there's a lot more great material to come from me. Thank you.